Well, thank you, Marty. <laughs> a new Jeep parking costs, what, 2400 bucks? Something like that. So you, $1,699 for the low end. Kevin Rose went out and you built an OS 10 compatible PC. I did. I did. You did. Uh, let me show you what I did. Here, first, here's actually the running machine. It's running. And this is the final product sitting here. It looks like a PC, but actually it has uh, Macintosh components inside of it, and it's running OS 10.2. So, so, but it's not a Mac, though. It's, well, it's not a Mac. It doesn't have the Mac case. It is all Mac components mm -hmm. that are actually Apple does sell. Well, they don't sell them directly, but they're, um, you can find third party that do sell them. How did you track down all these parts? That's the together? tricky part. The really? tricky part is finding all the components. I'll show you the first component we have here. This is the actual motherboard of the G4. And we got this from a place called uh, Mac Rescue. And this is a standard G4 motherboard. It has the 10100 LAN on the side, uh, USB ports, audio, everything a standard motherboard would have. Okay. That's the first component. I was able to track that down. After that, we go over here to the processor, and this is the, the core of the operating system. This is actually, or the operating system, the core of the computer. This is the one gigahertz with two megs of cache uh, Sonnet processor. And is that actually an upgrade processor? That is an upgrade processor because you cannot buy these components directly from Apple. Okay. They won't sell you a processor if you go to Apple.com. Okay. So I actually bought an upgrade processor from them. And then I went, uh, you have to actually have to find a CPU cooling fan as well for the processor because they're thinking it's an upgrade and they're thinking you already have the CPU cooling. But you don't. You don't because you're building one from scratch. Where did you find it? Because normally people don't really build these for, you know, over, nobody really overclocks a Mac. No, they don't. So what I did is I took a standard PC uh, CPU mm -hmm. cooling fan. This is the Volcano 6 from uh, Thermaltake. And it's really important. What you have to find here is you have to find one that will actually mount to the top and sit above. Uh, you see there's a lot of different uh, circuitry right. that's uh, sticking out here. You have to find one that will sit on the mount on there correctly. And actually, the, the, clip, the clip here, that's not going to work. you got to yank that out and find another way to kind of fasten it down to the CPU. I see rubber you bands, rubber bands yeah. zip ties, <laughs> any way that you can find to mount this down, uh, you know, whether it be zip ties or whatever, as long as there's a good solid connection so between the CPU. You're getting creative at that point. You are getting creative. This is where the, it comes, becomes Ordering really tricky. Ordering on sketchy. Definitely. Definitely sketchy. How about RAM? RAM, uh, go to crucial.com, mm -hmm. and I would just select the Apple and then choose the G4 configuration, okay. and it'll suggest standard PC-133 RAM. If you have some PC-133 laying around the house, you can use that as well. Uh, just go on there, and, and it's really inexpensive. You can get a 250 meg stick for like 30 bucks, next to nothing for PC-133. Should you go with ATI or NVIDIA for graphics? Well, I could have gone with NVIDIA. I was trying to, uh, but I found a really nice ATI board that I liked that had S-Video out. This, this is not the board. The board that actually I put in my system is right here. It's the Radeon 8500 which is right here, has S-Video on the back, and also has the uh, ADC connector for the Apple flat panel displays. But uh, you can go with any, uh, you actually have to go with a Mac-compatible video card. You can't just go out to the PC right. store and buy your standard ATI or Just because it plugs into a PCI no. slot doesn't not, mean it'll run in the Doesn't mind. mean it'll work. Okay. So that you have to get, uh, you, can, you can still pick those up anywhere, though. CompUSA, anywhere, you, uh, ATI.com. You could yank your hard drive, your DVD, your CDRW. Any hard DVD. drive, any, any CD-ROM you find, as long as it's a standard ATA hard drive and, and, uh, and CD-ROM. I went with the Western Digital WD-800, mm -hmm. which is their special edition drive that has the 8 megs of cache. Mm -hmm. That is just an awesome hard drive. It gives us a nice little 10, 15 percent performance increase with that extra cache, mm -hmm. and it works great on the Macs as well. So this looked like it was a nightmare to find. This is a special Macintosh power supply. Well, this is an ATX power supply. This is not the Macintosh one. The Macintosh oh. one that I actually purchases in here. But I was going to show you the difference here. If you take a look at the connector here of a standard ATX, mm -hmm. it's a 20-pin connector. And if you'll notice here, there's two extra pins at the end that are that the Apple has added in there. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why they added those later. But you're not going to be able to use the standard ATX power supply. Okay. Where'd you score the Mac keyboard and mouse? Now, that is the one component you can buy from Apple.com. Really? Yeah, you can go on there, and they actually sell the Pro keyboards and the Pro mice. And you can buy it straight from the Apple store, or you can also go to eBay if you want to save a few bucks and purchase off there as well. And you can also get the power supply, I forgot to okay. mention, off of eBay as well. How much is the power supply? Power supply is going to uh, cost you, what, a standard 300 watt ATX would, you know, okay. 60, 70 bucks, somewhere around there. Sounds Nothing good. too crazy. So what do we have next? The, the Antec case is standard ATX case? This is a standard ATX case. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem that we ran into, though, is that the Apple motherboard is not an ATX motherboard. Ah. So <laughs> one thing I'll show you here is that uh, I haven't actually have another. This is a standard ATX motherboard here. Now, this is a standard motherboard that you'd use with any x86 compatible PC. If you notice these, these pins, these, these holes here to, uh, to screw in screws, mm -hmm. this is standard on every single ATX case. These holes here on the motherboard are not going to align with the holes here in the case. 
Okay. So you're running into a big problem there. So you would actually have to pick up additional motherboard mounting screws and basically glue them or epoxy them in well, place? Well, what I did is I picked up uh, one of these right here. Take a look at that. And uh, I, I screwed that into the case there, into the ATX holes. And what, what is I, that if I'm shopping? I have no idea what they call it. A little actually, plastic thingy from your hardware store. A little plastic thingy from store. Home Depot or something like that. Got it. Uh, you stick one of the zip ties. zip ties all the way through, and then you can actually take that through one of the holes here in the corner. So you zip tied your zip -tied motherboard, the motherboard the into the case. And if you look inside here, I'll show you how it's zip tied in there. There's the actual zip tie in place holding the motherboard in. Uh -huh. And you can see it working there. Now, there's another option. Okay. One thing you can do is you can take this motherboard, you can hold it in the case, mm -hmm. and you can take a little red pen like a Sharpie here. And you take the Sharpie and you stick it through and you mark all the holes and where they're at. And so that it'll actually leave marks on the case. And what you do is you take one of these here, you drill a small hole, and this is an actual tap so you can mm -hmm. put a screw hole in there. You can tap it in there. Uh, I guess this is from Yoshi, actually. Right. He uses it all the time. Create the screw hole, and then you can actually create so you can mount it, hard mount it to the Got case it. itself. Better than using glue, better than using zip ties. We are running out of time. What happened the first time you tried to boot it? First time I had to boot it, everything went fine. Uh, it booted up just fine. Uh, basically, what you have to do is stick in OS 10.2, hold down C, it'll boot from the CD-ROM, and uh, it'll just install just fine. And it's nice. It's, it's running great, and it's a great little machine. What are you going to do with the uh, power switch? The power switch, actually, I have have a wiring diagram so you can use a standard PC uh, power switch as well. Mm -hmm. This is just one that I found off an old Mac and it's just that much easier just to connect it. So this is a single one gigahertz processor motherboard. Correct. If you built, well, they don't even sell one gig, a single CPU machine anymore. Apple doesn't, know. What would happen if you built a dual CPU machine? Uh, if you, if that's going to be really tricky. You're going to have to get a bigger uh, power, or a uh, bigger heat sink for it. Uh -huh. But you can do it. They do sell uh, dual processor motherboards and you can just pick up another uh, Sonnet uh, mm -hmm. one gigahertz chip. Uh, and it would work fine. It just you, you really have to focus on cooling. You have to put an extra fan on top of there, and just make sure that you really keep that CPU cool because it's get really hot. Are you going to save any money at that point over a new G4? That's a good question. Actually, you're going to you might save a few bucks, but you're going to put a lot of time and energy into it. Uh -huh. So it all depends on how much your time's worth and whether or not you want to really tinker around with this and worry about actually how you're going to mount it. And it's a project. It's it, definitely it's a lot harder than building. This a is a geeks project. This is a geeks project for sure. Okay. I wouldn't Would recommend it to like the basic, you know, first time computer builder. This is not you want to switch to a Mac. This is not no, the no, way no, no, to no. switch. Go buy an iMac or an iBook or something like that. Do not build it. But if you're a geek and you really like to geek out and get in there with the tools, this is the way to go. Would you do it again? Sure. I'd definitely do it again. This was a lot of fun. I learned a lot actually, you know, with tapping the holes and all that kind of stuff. So it, it's definitely worth trying. It's definitely worth trying. Yeah. Article up at the Screensavers? Yep, it's on there right now. Screensavers.com. This man suffered in building this computer. <laughs> you want to build your own computer, run OS 10, find out where to buy the parts, how he did it. It's all up at the Screensavers.com. Good stuff.